Oh, hey guys, Steve here from CG Geek. Just playing around on my homemade goblin glider, which is pretty cool. I made it myself and I'll actually, woo, I'll show you how to do it yourself because you can actually do it from home because this isn't real. It's actually made using visual effects and blender. So, see, woo. Okay, and here's what you'll need to pull off some of this visual effects wizardry. So first off, you're going to want to film yourself where you can chromo key out the background. The most common way is setting up a green screen for 20 or 30 bucks offline and setting it up behind you. Or you can film yourself in front of a blue sky, and the sky is often actually pretty easy to chromo out as long as you're not wearing any blue. And the third option, which I'm going to actually go with today, is if you live somewhere where you get a ton of snow, you can actually use some of these tall snow banks as a white backdrop that as long as you wear dark or black clothing, you can stand in front of a snow bank and chromo key yourself out without that much work. Next up, to get that full 360 spinning around green goblin glider experience, you're gonna need to find like an old office chair. I pulled this one out and removed the back so I have something that I can swivel on and turn all around. Then you want something that you can set on that office chair that will kind of spread your feet apart. Now, since I am a snowboarder, I'll just go with a snowboard, but you could also use a skateboard or a wakeboard or a board board. This is most definitely a bad idea. And definitely did not get the idea to make a video involving one of Spider-Man's famous villains due to the recent huge success of another particular video. Duh. Then with a solid color behind you and your camera locked off on a tripod, start doing your best goblin-y impersonation. I want to say thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video because what I set up here is I actually used their Creator 15 laptop connected to my camera so I could be reviewing my footage as I'm filming it. For example, I can test out a quick chromo key on location to make sure that my footage will chromo nice once I bring it into my studio to start working on the visual effects. And what's awesome about MSI's Creator 15 line of laptops is that they have a bright 4K display. This one has a fast NVIDIA RTX 3070 mobile GPU in it and a big 100 watt battery. So it's perfect for on the go work. It was totally capable of doing all these visual effects right from the laptop. And it's just a super slim, portable, great laptop for working on things like 3D graphics and visual effects wherever you might be. To learn more, follow the link in the description for the MSI Creator 15 laptop, and you can actually pick it up on sale right now, so you might want to check that out. Also, I wanted to mention that again this year, I am part of the MSI Creator Awards. This is a contest going on right now. I was part of it last year, and it was a blast. You can win some incredible prizes, and there's a really fun theme going along with it. So to learn more about that, definitely check out MSI's Creator Awards 2022 with the link in the description. But now that we have our embarrassing footage captured in super high resolution, it's time to take it over to Blender and start doing some of the visual effects magic. Okay, so with the latest version of Blender downloaded, we're gonna jump right in. For starters, go new and choose visual effects. Here, go ahead and open up the footage that you just shot. Here we have the footage of me fumbling around on our homemade glider. So now we'll go ahead and cut out that background. So I'm gonna jump over to the compositing tab and we're just gonna click use nodes, delete the render layer because in this Blender scene, we're just doing the chromo key. Hit N to close off your properties tab and go shift A, add in an input movie clip. Now you can go ahead and click that and your clip should still be there. So go ahead and choose your footage and then hit control shift, click to add in a viewer node. V and Alt V zoom in and out. So I'll hit V to zoom out a little bit here. I found what worked best for the chroma on the scene is actually adding in an input, matte, and choosing a color key. Go ahead and drop this right in. Then for the color key, we're gonna grab the eyedropper here. We're just gonna try and select the most neutral color in the background here. Uh, one thing you wanna do is under color management, turn off filmic, change this to standard. Now you have a few options here for the hue, saturation, and value. This is gonna vary a little bit depending on your footage and what you're using as your backdrop. If you film this on a green screen, you might wanna use the one minute green screen tutorial that I posted with the link up here or there or down there. That'll show you how you use the keying node, which might actually work better for a green screen. But for a white sort of screen here, this worked best. So for my scene, I'm going to take the hue all the way up to a 0.9. This might depend a little bit on your footage though. You can see that cuts out a good amount of the white. Then for the saturation, you can go a little bit with this, but you can't go too far or we'll end up cutting out too much of your character. So for this, I want a 0.2. And then the value, you can go a little bit higher, like a 0.3. Again, play around with these, but as you can see, that did a pretty solid job of taking out most of the white around me. Now there is a few pesty little spots that are still remaining here and how to get rid of those is really simple. I'm just going to duplicate the keying screen. I'm gonna take the values here way down to a 0 0.3, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. So this one is not as strong. And then for the keying color on this node, I'm just going to select one of these pesky spots. And if I go to that, you can see that it is actually removing all of those individual spots. So now all you have to do is add in a color mix, drop it in there, change it to multiply and multiply these two images together. And you'll want to choose the mat and not the image output. Now what you want to do to see results on screen here is go shift A, add in a converter, set alpha, drop this right in, and then take the original footage as the image and use this multiply node as the alpha. 
We can do a little bit to clean up the edges though of this mask. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see it's a little bit jagged right now. So what I'll start off by doing is adding in a filter, dilate and erode. I'll drop that right in there. I'll give it a distance of negative one. It's also a little harsh. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new filter. We're gonna choose blur. I'll set this one to fast Gaussian and give this a value of three on the X and Y. So then there's one more step that we can do here and that's by duplicating our dilate and erode node, dropping it right in there. This time changing it from step to feather and leaving it at a negative one distance. And that's looking pretty clean. Now on to the masking step. So jumping over to the masking tab here, we're gonna grab our footage in the background there. And I'm also gonna go ahead and close the compositor window there as that's just gonna be slowing us down. Now I'm gonna make two masks for this. The first one is gonna be removing. So I'll just name this one remove. And this is going to be the base mask all around my character. So to add in a mask, I'm gonna hold down control and left, left click. Yep, that's right. <laughs> and this is gonna be a pretty simple mask. I only really need four handles. So I'm just moving around my character, clicking four times, dragging out a handle. And then with the last one, you can select the first handle that you added there and go Alt C to close that off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut off the boots that I'm wearing because I found that it's gonna work best because I found that it's gonna work best to just CGI the boots instead of trying to keep your own boots masked into the scene as that would be a lot more difficult to get them to blend in with the glider. So the cutoff line on your mask is actually gonna be on top of whatever shoe or boot you are wearing when you filmed your footage. And then just go ahead and position the handles around your character. Then enable automatic keyframing and also it's time to set the end time to your timeline. So I have approximately 680 frames here. Then with automatic keyframing enabled, you're just gonna start scrubbing through every 50 frames or so and adding in a new keyframe by moving your handles to make sure that your character is still in it and the boots are still being cut off. But once you have that done, you're gonna add in one more mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the little button here to add in a new mask. This one we're gonna be calling add. And why are we calling it add? That's because this is where we're going to add areas of the mesh that we want to keep in. So as you can see, I'm wearing a shirt here and I also have a logo on my pants that is both going to be removed obviously by my color key. So for this mask, I'm gonna add in another simple mask by control left clicking. And we're just going to be surrounding the inside of my body for the things that we don't want removed. Again, then scrubbing through and making sure that you're keeping the mask contained to just the inside of the character. This might take a little bit more keyframes than before, so it's a little bit more of a detailed mask. But once you go through and add the keyframes for that mask, you can jump to your compositing tab here, go Shift A, add in an input mask. We'll start by adding the remove mask and we'll go Shift A, add in a color mix node. Drop it right after your last dilate and erode node here before the set alpha. Change it to multiply and drop it right in the bottom. And if you have your mask properly set up, you can see that we now have our character without all the random junk around the outside. Now, if you need to bring back any information that's being removed from your character, you can go ahead and duplicate that mask switch this one to add, go ahead and duplicate the multiply node, switch this one to screen and connect this to the bottom. And that brings back the details in our self that was being removed by the chromo key. But that's it for the masking phase. Now you wanna go ahead and save out your mask as an image sequence. So you're gonna go ahead and just pick an output location here, choose PNG. Once that's all set up with an output folder and your render settings are the same here with the frame rate and the resolution, then you can just go ahead and go render animation and it will start rendering out all of those frames as an image sequence. Now we need a glider to fly around on. So you can either download one for free, like I did for my test scene. I got this one off Sketchfab. There'll be a link in the description. Or even better, you can create your own 3D glider. How? Well, here, I'll show you. All right, so here we go. How to create a quick and dirty 3D glider. Tab into edit mode on the default cube and control R to add an edge loop. Toggle on the X-ray vertices option and hit B to box select and X to delete all the vertices on the left. Then jump to the modifiers tab and add in a modifier, mirror modifier. Choose clipping and scale that down along the Z and along the X and scale it out along the Y. Grab those edge vertices and pull them around to start creating a sharp, kind of cool sci-fi looking object. Then grab one of the faces and hit Shift D to make a duplicate of that face. Scale this one up along the Z axis and extrude it out. Give us some kind of cool sharp edges here. Let's go ahead and grab another face now, duplicate it, scale this one up a little bit. This will be the main wing, so we'll make it larger along the Y axis. We can add an edge loop to the middle of this one. Jump into top view and finding a shape for this wing that looks kind of cool. Then jump into front view and making sure you're rotating it to give it that glider curve. You will duplicate another face, make another sort of sci-fi wing shape thingy, add an edge loop along the edge to give it sort of a blade look, then keep positioning these low poly chunks together to make the shape of the glider. Then just play around with the rotation on some of these wing pieces to get kind of a cool looking shape. Here we'll select a face underneath and inset it hitting I, then grab the vertices and double tap G to slide them into more of a square shape, grabbing that face then and extruding it out. Then you can grab the face inside of that hole, rotate it and extrude it out to create a pipe kind of connecting the wings along the bottom of the glider here. We'll duplicate another face to create another sort of jet engine on this bottom layer of the glider, then duplicate 
duplicate another face on the top. This will be where the feet rest, so scale it down to a good foot size. Then just extrude some vertices for a super quick and dirty toe strap. Here you can duplicate it and move it up for the heel as well. And that gives us some foot straps so you don't fall off this hunk of junk glider. Okay, add in a new modifier. This one will be a subdivision surface modifier. Change it over to simple, and then change the viewport and render levels up to a value of around 6. Now, jump into the material tab, and here we'll make a few new materials. Also, make sure you jump over to your render engine and change it from EV over to cycles. Now, back in the materials, this is important. Scroll to the very bottom and choose the settings option. Under displacement, change it from bump only to displacement and bump. Now, you can split your window and open up the shader editor on the left side. Here, we'll go shift A and add in a displacement node. Connect the displacement to the material output. Then, with the displacement node connected, hit control shift T. Of course, make sure that the node regular add-on is enabled in the preferences for this shortcut to work. Now, we're going to open a texture. These are some cool glitch displacement textures I found off the internet. Link in the description. I'm going to use image 24 for this one. Now in edit mode, grab a portion of your mesh by selecting a vertex and hitting L to select the whole object. Now hit U and choose Smart UV Project. Click OK and now you can assign the material you just created to that object. Take the displacement strength down to something smaller like a 0.04 or 5. Then in the mapping node, select the scale X, Y, and Z and change this to something small as well like a 0.25. Now you can see we're getting some cool sci-fi displacements on that object with hardly any work. And you can change the X location value on the mapping node for some variation. For a little bit of color, you can connect the texture to the base color on your principal shader, then add in a new node, this one a converter math node, dropping it right in there, changing it to a multiply, and giving this a value of about a 0.2 or 3, just to take down the intensity a bit. Now change the value of the metallic to 1 on the principal shader. Now you can go ahead and select other parts of your mesh, hit U to Smart UV Project, and assign the material to these areas as well. Selecting and assigning this material to any of the objects on the glider that you think should have some cool sci-fi displacement. Now one more material, select everything on the glider that doesn't yet have a material and unwrap it. For this material, add in a node. This one will be a bump node. Connect the normal to the normal on the principal shader here and select that bump mode and control shift T for another texture. I'll open up another texture for that bump. This one will be image 12 and change it from the strength to the height input on the bump node. Take the strength down to something like 0.3 and the scale on the mapping node down to about a 0.3 as well. Give this material full metallic as well and maybe a little bit of a darker gray color and take the reference down a little bit on the principal shader for some more reflections. Now for some glowing lights in the glider, inset a few faces underneath the glider and select those faces, extrude them out, and with a new material, assign it to it. For this new material, it will be an emission shader. The strength will be something strong like 20, and the color will be a nice green goblin-y color. Make sure it's assigned to those faces, because come on, that's starting to look good. You can duplicate a few faces on the front here and assign the material to it as well for a little bit of extra glowing LED lights. Go ahead and inset the faces on the end of the wings and assign this new color to it as well. Definitely want some of that glow on the underside of the glider. One more for the back of the glider here, and then maybe a small LED light strip along the front. Now you're going to want to do the boots of your character on the glider, CG as well. For this, you can either download this 3D photo scan model from the internet or photo scan some yourself using some of the tutorials on CG Geek. Just make sure the quality isn't super high on this photo scan by adding a decimal modifier and taking it down to about a 0.1 value. Then you can go ahead and position the boot and the straps that you added to your glider. You'll likely have to tweak the toe cap, so enabling proportional editing and then just pulling those around to fit the shape of the boot you're using. Then shift D to duplicate the boot and S, X, negative 1 to flip it along the x-axis for the left side. And that's looking pretty dope. I didn't show this on screen, but you want to grab both of your boots, then the glider last, and hit control P to parent it to the object, just choosing offset. And there we ha 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 have it. So that's how that's done. Actually, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the finished glider here, as well as all the other finished scenes on the channel. Also, just a huge thanks to all the Patreon members that have been supporting me over the last few years now. You guys have been amazing in helping keep the channel running. All right, so in your 3D glider scene with Blender here, we're going to go ahead and add in the footage that we created. And in the Preferences tab, you're going to want to make sure under Add-ons that you have the images as planes add-on enabled. Now you can go Shift A and add in an image, images as planes, and select your raw original footage here to open up the original movie clip. So here you can see we have the footage with everything in the background that doesn't look very good. We'll split our window here and open up the shader editor. Now just go shift A and add in a new texture, image sequence. This time you're gonna wanna select the folder that you saved out all of your alpha images into and just hit A to make sure you select all of the images and import image sequence. We'll go ahead and drop that in there, choose cycle and auto refresh and connect the color to the alpha on your principal node here. Now you can see the chroma key working in action. Now scrubbing through your timeline, find a shot where you're pretty straight and perfect 
perpendicular to the camera and go ahead and just position it so the feet are going into those CGI boots that we have on our glider. You may have to tweak the scale of your boots and your footage to make it match nice and perfect as I have here. That looks pretty good. Now you're going to want to make sure that from top view you're lined up as well. And as you can see with my camera position just in front view, actually just a little bit above front view, looks like the legs are going right into those boots and everything actually looks pretty cool. You just don't want to turn to the side to see that I'm a paper cutout. So what we can do now is grab the footage here and jump to the constraints tab, add in a new object constraint, copy location. Before you do anything, you'll want to apply the location on your footage. So hit control A and choose apply location. Now we can choose the target of the glider model here. And you can see just by doing that, if we move the glider, the footage moves with me. And that's perfect because we want to copy the location but not the rotation. Sweet, but now we do need to animate the rotation of the glider so it rotates when my legs rotate. To do this, I'm just going to go Shift A and add in a new empty. We'll just choose the arrows empty here. And you can just kind of position this off to the side so you can see it pretty easily. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your glider and add in a copy rotation constraint. For the target, it's going to be the empty. You might want to apply your mirror modifier before doing this step. And as you can see now, if we rotate the empty, we can rotate that glider, which is perfect. Now we're just gonna start adding some keyframes to this empty so the glider follows the rotation of my legs. So choosing automatic keyframing and hitting I to insert our first rotation keyframe on 490, which is where I decided to start. We'll go ahead and scrub about 50 frames and then double tap R to go ahead and rotate that glider and then just rotate it again so it's matching up with the feet pretty closely there. And as you can see, if we scrub through, it's not quite right because we need to add in another keyframe here, of course. And as you can see, we just go through adding some manual keyframes here until it looks like the glider is actually following the legs pretty closely. If you find yourself in a situation where you just can't get the rotation to work, it's possible that you'll have to animate the location of your character a little bit as well. And just choose offset on your copy location constraint. Then go ahead and add in a keyframe where it looks good in your timeline. Scrub along to the point where it needs to be moved a bit. And then you can add a few keyframes to this if necessary to position your character right over the boot slots on your glider. And now once you have all the keyframing pretty tight for the rotation, you can go ahead and add some keyframing to the glider itself. You just jump to frame one, grab the glider, move it right out of the scene there. Also jumping from top view, you can pull it closer and further to the camera to an extent. Then you can just scrub forward till it looks like I start turning on the glider and pull the glider across your scene. Maybe I kind of float back this way then. A little closer to the camera. And you can see where it's pretty easy to go ahead and add motion to your glider then once you already have the rotation keyframes. Now it's time to get in the last stage of some rendering and some smoke. Just go Shift A and scale up a quick plane for the background here and hit extrude to kind of loop this up in the background so it's a nice white backdrop. Go ahead and scale it along the x-axis. Perfect, you can go ahead and hit Control 2 to add in a subdivision surface modifier on that and then right click and shade it smooth. Now to match the lighting, I'm just using an HDR from HDR Haven here. Go ahead and download one from HDR Haven. There's plenty of awesome ones and you'll sure to find one that kind of matches the lighting or scenario that you were shooting your footage in. And then for a little extra shadows because I really wanted the shadow of the glider on the ground, I added in a few sun lamps. So for this, I added in a sun lamp just kind of coming from the back here. Nothing crazy and a soft angle so we didn't have too sharp of shadows. You can see we're getting a shadow on the ground. We just might want to move that whole background plane up a little bit so we can see the shadow in our camera. Also we want to turn off the shadow for our backdrop option. So click that camera option there and then under ray visibility just uncheck shadow. Also of course we're rendering with cycles and GPU compute. I'm actually using an RTX 3090 from MSI. Basically the coolest RTX 3090 on the market. Okay so now you can duplicate that sun to add in one more. This will also add in another shadow. And this one we're just going to create even a softer shadow by giving it an angle of 15 and a little bit more of a blue hue to this one. Little less strength as well. We'll take it down to about a 0.6. Also, you might notice that we have some shadows on our character. We can fix that real quick. Under the materials for our video footage, you're just gonna wanna take the color and make that an emission shader as well. And take the strength down to a 0.5, which I found matched the footage pretty closely. But this way, you're also still getting a little bit of the lighting that you're adding to your 3D scene, which just helps it match the visual effects a little bit closer, I found. That's looking pretty cool, but we really need to add a little bit of smoke. And I want the smoke to be emitting from a few different spots on the back of this glider. So starting off, I'm gonna place the cursor right on this wing go shift a and add in a icosphere we'll go ahead and scale that icosphere down real small so it's something just like that we'll shift d duplicate it pull it over to the other side and make sure that it's lined up right about the same point there grab both those icosphere's and go control j to make them one object and then grab the glider and go control p and set the parent to the object. Now you can see those spheres follow the object perfectly, and these are going to be emitting particles for the smoke. So in your particle settings here, create a new particle system. 
We're gonna give it 10,000 particles. We're gonna have it start 12 frames before frame one, so go negative 12, set the end frame to the end of your video, and set the lifetime to be about 12 frames for these particles. Now if I was to play this back, you can see we're dropping out all kinds of particles, but they just kind of fall into the ground. Let's fix that real quick. Under velocity, we'll give it two, and then under the X and Y, we'll give it four. So they're really kind of shooting out a bit now from that. So drop down to your field weights and under gravity, we're gonna give it just a value of 0.1. That's looking pretty cool. The last thing you can change is the Brownian motion. Give that a 0.1, and that just gives a little bit more random variation to those particles, which is pretty cool. Awesome. Now we want one more source for our smoke, and that will be the turbo jet thingy in the middle of our glider here. So what I'm gonna do is just place my cursor there, shift A, add in a new mesh. We'll choose uh, UV sphere this time, just to be different. Tab in x-ray mode here and just select all the vertices that are inside the mesh here that you don't really need, and hit X and delete vertices. So we just have half a UV sphere there for the smoke emission. Now, under camera view, go ahead and place the cursor in the middle, hit Shift-A and add in a cube. Scale this cube up to fit the whole scene so we have smoke everywhere in the scene. Make sure that everything is inside the frame. Under your physics properties, enable fluid, change the fluid type to be domain, and change the resolution right off the bat to 60 so we have just a little bit more res to work with. Next, grab your particle object, Choose fluid again, this time it's going to be a flow. And under flow behavior, choose inflow. And then under the flow source here, choose particle system. Grab that particle system that we just created. Give it a few subframes, and that's really all we have to do in the particle settings here. Now grab our second smoke emitter and do the same thing. Add in a fluid. Fluid type is going to be flow. This one will be inflow as well. A few subsampling steps, and the only difference is this one you can enable initial velocity on. Now lastly, make sure that you grab that UV sphere that we created, then grab the glider and control P, parent this one to the object as well. And second, if you don't want these little objects showing up in your render, under the particle settings, you're gonna to wanna to choose render uncheck show emitter. And for that UV sphere under the object settings here, also uncheck the show and renders option. You can see that we have some smoke being emitted from that glider, and it's looking pretty dope. Actually, it's looking super dope. A few quick things before you bake your smoke simulation. You're gonna wanna choose dissolve, set this to about 35, I found to be a good amount. Then check noise. For my final bake, I cranked the up res up to three. Set the end time to be the end of your timeline, which is 680 frames in this case. The final resolution divisions, I went with 160, which I found to be kind of necessary to get rid of some of the blockiness in the smoke simulation that you might see when you're rendering with cycles. But again, you can play around with this if you want faster results, go with something smaller. And then just change the type here under the bake settings to be all. Once that's said and done, you can click bake all, sit back and wait for your simulation to process. So once your bake is finished now, you're gonna need a material for that smoke before you can see it being rendered in cycles. So for this material, we're just going to delete the basic principled shader and shift A, add in the basic principled volume shader. Go ahead and connect this up to the volume output on your material output here. And right off the bat, you can see your smoke is being rendered and there's really not too much you actually have to do to get some pretty cool results using this node. I'm just gonna boost the density up to about a 1.7 or so. Play around with this density until you're happy with the amount of smoke that you're getting in the scene, but I thought that looked pretty cool. And then there's one more thing that you can do that's really cool, so I'll show you it right now. On the back of your glider, Shift A, add in a new light, we'll make a spotlight. We're gonna give it a crazy high value of about 75, we're gonna give it a very large spot size of about 120 and a very large blend as well We'll give that a 0.8 and the color of this is just gonna be a really good green gobliny green color We're gonna go ahead and rotate this so the cone is just shooting out the back of your glider as you can see there And then grab the glider and hit control P and parent that lamp to the glider So it follows the glider around and as you can see now It does a really cool job of lighting up the smoke as it flies around and that's pretty much it There's a few last little touches that you can do as a little extra spice for realism. Number one, you can enable motion blur in the cycles render settings, and I set this all the way up to a 0.85 under the shutter. And then number two, under your compositing settings, just add in a few glare nodes. Just added one glare node and changed it to fog glow, and then added a glare node as well and changed it to streaks. You can see my settings here are pretty simple, just a slight mix of these glows added to the scene connected to your viewer and composite node. With that all said and done, you're ready to render out a final animation by jumping to your output here, choosing an output to put all of your images and rendering them out as a PNG image sequence, I recommend. It's always smart to render out as an image sequence because if Blender crashes midway through the render, you can just uncheck overwrite start rendering again, and it will start off at the last frame that it left off at in that folder. Then when it comes time to putting your finished animation sequence together, you can just create a new Blender file, create a new video editing scene, as you can see I just did there, and go Shift-A, add in an image sequence, just like we did when we opened up our mask earlier in the video. Here you can play it back right inside of Blender, or if you want to save it out for full quality, just change your file format then to FFmpeg, the encoding to be an MPEG-4, 
and H.264 is great. You can make it really high quality if you want here. Give it an output and then render your animation one more time and you're completely done. And that wraps up that visual effects project. If you had fun and want more, I'd definitely leave a like on the video. If you had a question, leave it in the comments and I'll answer it as soon as possible. And for more fun, crazy visual effects adventures, definitely get subscribed and hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. Again, thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video with their Creator 15 laptop. You can check it out on sale with the link in the description. But that'll do it for me, guys, and I'll see you all in a future video. Yeah.